you're working for the man. When you had told us we're the head and not the tail. Yes, to step God. out in faith. We work for them. And that's why they're able to obey you in what they do know. Because they own the businesses. A lot of the businesses. Mm -hmm. Which is told. You who said, I'm going to give you wealth in order for you to establish the covenant. Yep. And, that's what they do. and the Jewish people preserved the Tanakh for us, by and large, mm -hmm. after the split of the house of David. That's it. So the, Yehuda, Yeshua, Ye, the father knows they reject his son. But the father also knows that Judah was never fully cut off. And they have an authority uh. in their dealings with Elohim. Their authority is in that what they have right they guard. guard. What well, we have right, we toss it to the wind and, and we look compromise. and we're dedicated to backsliding <laughs> and compromise yes. to hold on to what we think we have. And Yeshua yes. says, no, you got yes. one foot in Egypt Come on, and you man, got one man. foot in Israel and you can't do it that way. That's it. No, man. Well, because when Judah good, got man. right, you, you try to take that away from Judah. They will fight you. you try to tell the Jewish people they have to violate Pesach yes. and they have to violate Sukkot. Right. Try to tell them kill you first. Try to tell them that it's not necessary for their children to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. oh. They have no problem getting their people circumcised. That's you know right. why? They because they've made it their business to learn how to circumcise their That's own. Right. Yeah. Which That's is right. why we've got to get them to circumcise the Ephraimites yeah, exactly. because they have rule with Elohim in covenant and they are faithful to the Kadosh One in the areas that they understand. Oh, yeah. In the areas that they've been blinded, their mm -hmm. table has become a snare. That's it. Come on. Boy, you preach good today. Well, thank Man. you. Come on. Yeah. That's, that's told. Hoshea 12.1. Told one. Yeah. Hoshea 12.1. Mm -hmm. So what is Ephraim doing? Are they feeding on Torah truth that they were given and nurtured and cords of love and the cords of a man, Moses, who delivered them? No. Hosea 12.1. Ephraim is feeding on wind. Every wind of doctrine. Uh oh. Uh oh. If Ryan follows after the east wind, that's Woo! the wind of judgment. Uh oh. Ooh. Taking him west. That's it. The west is called Mizraim. Mm -hmm. In Hosea 11:11. 11, 11. That's it. They are like a bird in Mizraim. What is the bird today? What is the symbol of Christianity today? The dove. A bird. Of God. The dove. So, so where is dove. Christianity primarily? In the Middle East? No. Christianity is primarily where? In the West. In the West. In the West. Mm. Christianity is symbolized by what? A bird. A dove. Mm -hmm. In the West. A dove. A bird. In the West. He daily increases, notice verse 1, Hosea 12, 1. He daily increases his lies. In other words, it doesn't get better, it gets worse. worse. And his desolation. Mm -hmm. And they make a covenant with the Assyrians. Yeah. And their oil whoop, uh -oh. is sent or is found in Mitzrayim. Well. What is oil symbolic of? The Ruach HaKodesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you find their oil? It's, nice it's already been sent <coughs> to Mitzrayim. Oh, wow. They're not using it for Torah obedience and for being faithful to the Holy One and ruling with the Holy One, even their oil has been sent to Egypt. Now what were you saying about, what were you saying about Ephraim being free? So today we're celebrating our freedom as a people, yeah? Yes. We're yes. celebrating, and hey, here the Heavenly Father comes and ruins our party. But not because he ruins our party. He wants to remind you, if you're faithful to the end, you will be part of that greater oh, exodus oh, in the end times. Yes. Yeah. But if he finds your oil in Egypt, and he finds you in the West, mm -hmm. surrounding him with lies and deceit, meaning making excuses for all the reasons you can't do what you're supposed to do. Exactly. exactly. Well, you'll yeah. be lost. The book of Jasher says that some of our people were left in Egypt. in Egypt. Some of our people never left Egypt in the first exodus. To me, that means some of y'all that are surrounding him with, with deceit and lies, unlike Judah, who is being faithful to what they do know and rules with him in the matters that they do know, you will not come out in the end time exodus. The great tribulation will eat your lunch. And will cause you to lose faith. Say, Rabbi, well, I know if I'm killed in the Great Tribulation, I will survive. Yes, but before, you, if you, but we don't know that, the Great Tribulation may steal your faith. 
if, 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 the, if the footmen are wearing you now, oh my goodness, how will you contend with the horses, the four horses of the apocalypse? <coughs> you're, you're making excuses now. What excuse are you going to give the anti Islamic anti Messiah of the revived Roman Turkish Ottoman Empire who controls the oil in Saudi Arabia and the entire economy when you can't buy and sell and eat unless? The, the revived Islamic end time beast tells you to say the Shahida, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is prophet because Ephraim is in Egypt and Egypt is a Muslim country and is the world, they will have no problem saying the Shahida because they want to eat, they want to survive, they want to, they see that their provision is in, say, in, in being deceitful and being committed to backsliding and when it comes to taking the mark of the beast, they will take the mark of the beast because their life is characterized by compromise and by deceit. Exactly. Such is the state of Ephraim. And Judah, <coughs> they're lost. They don't have Mashiach. They don't have salvation. But they have a lot to teach us when it comes to letting your yes be yes and your no be no. If Yahuwah is Yahuwah, serve him. If Baal is, is Yahuwah, go serve him. Or Elohim, go serve Baal. Exactly. But do not continue to do this dance that you have been doing. Man, come on now. Well, it just depends where I have a ride. Whoop. You know, I just can't always get where I want to get to. I have a ride to the Baptists, I go to the Baptists. If I have a ride to the JWs, I go to the JWs. If I have a ride to the Presbyterians, I go to the Presbyterians. And you wonder why you're confused? Exactly. You've got to grow where you're planted. Mm -hmm. You know why everyone in this room has grown in, in knowledge and truth? Mm -hmm. Because you're growing where you're planted. Oh, you don't jump around like you used to. Oh. Right? right you don't jump right. around like you used to. <laughs> you grow where you're planted. <laughs> but notice where Ephraim is spending the precious Ruach HaKodesh oh, in Mitzrayim. Yes. Now this has a dual application. Listen, it shows us that much of Ephraim has headed west of Yerushalayim, even though they initially headed east. Second, the expression east wind, Ephraim eats or feeds on an east wind, indicates the wind of judgment. The oil of the Ruach is not preserved in Israelite vessels, but Ephraim has taken the anointing oil of the Ruach and stored it in Egyptian sun worship and polytheism as in the days before the Exodus. The depravity of the spirit leads Ephraim to make pacts with end-time Islamic beasts in the empire from Turkey and the revived Islamic empire. Notice, it is a misappropriation of the Torah and the Ruach HaKodesh. Ephraim, as long as you're compromised and you're double-minded and unstable, you will take that which is Kadosh and turn it over for guardianship to the lords of Baal in Egypt and in the ways that are not Torah, Egyptian sun worship, polytheism, just like you did before the Exodus. Your state right now is exactly as it was before this day ever occurred some 3,500 years ago. Wow. Wow. Because you're feeding on an east wind. You know what an east wind is? Rainy? It's a Hebraic metaphoric expression, the wind of judgment. When you said, I will send an east wind, a Ruach Kadem, or a Ruach Kedem, it is a wind of judgment. And Ephraim thinks, I'm free, I'm free, but he's feeding on the wind of judgment. Wow. Mm. And at the same time, laughing at the plight of his brother Judah. Mm. Oh, wow. This has got to change. Ephraim has to be as faithful as Judah, and Judah has to be as committed to Yeshua as Savior as Ephraim. There has to be change in both houses. Verse 9. Hosea 12, 9. And I, who am Yahuwah your Elohim from the land of Mishraim, will yet make you dwell in Sukkot as in the days of the solemn Moed of Sukkot. Where is Ephraim now? In October? Halloween, brother. <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. Halloween a right. Where is Ephraim now? Comes Sukkot. When it comes to the time of Yeshua's birth, where is Ephraim? Church. In Rockefeller Center, watching the world's tallest Christmas tree go up. 
out there drinking eggnog and acting like, 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 I don't want to say what. Hell yeah. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Right. We wish you a Merry Christmas.